people. Michael Beasley came out and told the whole world and showed them and showed out his pain of what through and what he'd been going through on how he's been perceived throughout his NBA career, throughout his whole life. And shout out to the pivot for doing an amazing job. Uh, Ryan Clark, uh, Fred, and that crazy dude that's sitting next to him. Uh, they have also created an avenue where the narratives has never been favorable to Michael Beasley. Because I read the articles that he's talking about. It was like all the time he stayed in trouble. But I rooted for him and I remember making a video rooting for Michael Be Beasley because when it was him and Derrick Rose, he was the best player in college. He clearly was the best basketball player in college. Then Derrick Rose come along. So now it's Michael Beasley or Derrick Rose, who's gonna be the number one pick in the draft? I knew that going in, what that was gonna detail. I knew what that was gonna be. I picked every Chicago Bulls at the first pick of the draft. And we was like, okay, well, the Bulls got the first pick. The first pick is going to be Michael Beasley, right? So Michael Beasley, and then it was like, well, it's all these things about his off the court situation. They brought this up in the draft. It was so out of this world when they brought it up. D Rose was more explosive. He was more of an explosive player than Michael Beasley, but Michael Beasley was the better all around game. He was the show. And when they were coming to the draft, the whole city wanted the Bulls to take Derrick Rose. I was one of the only people saying, no, we've tried the Chicago experiment. It don't normally work. I think the Bulls should take Michael Beasley. Everybody hated my guts. How you hate on Derrick Rose? He gonna be back in the city. This is it. I was like, man, I'm just saying as an overall player, I think Michael Beasley is pro ready right now. It's not a knock on Derrick if, if he goes second. But I thought the Bulls should have took Michael Beasley. Then when the draft comes down, they took Derrick Rose and Derrick Rose proved to be everything and more than what they bargained for. And Beasley was never really given the opportunity that Derrick was on the court. And everywhere he go, there was different narratives. As you can see, as he said here, we only had Twitter and Facebook really at that time. That was the dominant thing as far as controlling social media. And any little thing they said, people just went with it. There was no IG. There was no people with, really with their own narratives that they could tell their own side of their stories. They took Twitter and Facebook away from him. Every time they said something stuff about me, I was in a in gym playing basketball. Every time they said I got pulled over with a bag of weed, I, every time somebody can lie on me about something, well, I was in a, well, everybody. That's how I feel. And I sit there and, and I work 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 and I put hours in, I put hours in, I put hours in, and I watch everybody else make their own narrative. We didn't get this when I was young. They told us to shut the fuck up. 2008 coming in, all we had is Twitter and Facebook. When you stepped wrong, it was stuck. I remember I walked in the club 
and somebody was smoking a black and mild. Somebody tweeted about that. Shit. I went to the gym and I got in trouble for it. Like I had it in my fucking hand. Like, I, got that shit. I, got, I can't. I couldn't do. Shit. And 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 now that it's your own narrative, does it give you a place where you can speak freely? No, no. And no, you could not speak freely. They didn't allow you to. They didn't want you to. Nobody. Nobody reached out to help him. I remember Kevin Durant tried to. He wants to play basketball. No, he's 33 years of age. Nobody's really looking for a 33-year-old to come back to the league or play basketball, but maybe the big three. That's in my personal opinion, but I think it's deeper than that. I think he's been emotionally drained from everything in life and always going through. It was the most revealing Oh, thanks, uh, Alex. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, but Melo had the chance. Like he said, he averaged 16 and 3. And he was averaging 16 points and 3 when he only had like about maybe 16 minutes a game. He was never given the chance to really play basketball. No, Beasley actually had moves. Like he he actually had basketball ability. Derrick Rose was more explosive at that time. Like Derrick could explode to the rim. All, that's why Derrick Rose was so captivating because when you watch Derrick Rose play, he was so good. It wasn't just about him scoring the basketball. It was how he scored. And when you saw Derrick Rose play, it was explosive. Like, it was like something you're going to see on ESPN. That's just different. Yeah, well, Michael Beasley is like that. Lance Stevenson was just in the league on a 10-day contract. It's a lot of players that should be in the league. That's why they got to expand. I told you guys this. You got to read the signs. There's too many guys playing longer, so it's messing up the ecosystem. For help to be, you dig what I'm saying? It's like my whole life I asked for help. Help, 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 help from my favorite athletes, from my favorite celebrities, from my favorite people in the world, everybody. And it's like, everybody just like, either call me crazy or just, you know, I don't want to get into personal, personal, but like, Fred was talking about the way you work. Now, see, it's breaking his heart to even talk about it. Because he's hurt. He felt betrayed.
And that's why, you know, and it, everything's going to go back to Kevin Durant because him and Kevin Durant came up since 11 years old, you know, and playing basketball together. And him and KD sat down on the boardroom. And I remember when he gave up smoking weed and everything. Like, I ain't smoking weed no more. I'm, I'm clean. I'm doing this and that. You know, and I was so proud of Michael Beasley for taking that approach because that was always the rock, the rap on him. Oh, he got bags of weed in the car. He's getting busted. I'm, damn, Beasley can't be smoked out every day. You know, like I'm, I'm wanting him to succeed in life and make it. So as he went from team to team to team, he never got what he was promised. When he got on the team with the Lakers, I think with LeBron James, Beasley was on that team. He was promised more opportunities to showcase his skill. They never really trusted him, and he never really had that bond. Well, he might have burned some bridges. I mean, but he's had a lot of things go wrong in his life, you know, like coming up. So he had a lot of things rough. You know, he was homeless a lot of times, you know, since he was a kid. So you people just got to understand. He's somebody that had it rough. He didn't know all of these things. coming in with the entourage and I ain't had not one person in this market like like that, that didn't still I, I don't know I don't know nobody that ain't stole from me period like period from you know what I'm saying like everybody except for my kids stole from me and every step of the way I asked for help bro how this how that I'm talking about this person I don't drop names I ain't into making my story about nobody else I don't want nobody name into whatever I got going on you know what I'm saying no 100% you know what I'm saying yeah. so I, I, I ask my let's get it my let's got it I'm talking about money endorsements I'm talking about everything like bro how do I do this bro how do I do that bro how do I turn this how do I get this how do I get them to take me serious how 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 yeah. Every text message left on Reddit, so I, like nobody would tell me what the right thing to do, right? Nobody would tell me what to do. Don't do this, don't do this. But then as soon as I do something, everybody would tell me it's wrong. You see that? You ever seen that scenario? Nobody will help you, but the moment you make a move, they're there to critique you. You ever go through that? You never been through that? That is the narrative, a known narrative in this game, buddy. People are going to be who they are. I remember I remember when Beasley came to play it was 2010 and Beasley got uh, Beasley got his um, I think he injured his knee. 
And they were supposed to come play the Chicago Bulls. And he had like a knee injury. And they were hyping it up because Derrick Rose was playing against them. So this is their, I think it was their rookie year or the year after. Or their second year. So this is Derrick's like MVP run. He's at the peak. And all of a sudden, they're playing against uh, Michael Beast. And he's coming in the game banged up and injured. And he's not playing as many minutes as Derek. Like, he's not the. F hey, how y'all doing? He's not the, uh, the, f the fixture of the team. Like, they are not even. They're basically treating him like a role player and developing him slowly, bringing him off the bench, playing less minutes, where Derek is starting is one of the pivotal persons on offense. But this is the publicity, and they made Derek the good guy and Michael Beasley the villain. They talked about him off the court behavior. I remember on ESPN Radio, 1000 AM, here in Chicago, they played it and they talked about Michael Beasley so damn bad. I mean, everybody was taking shots at him before the game. And I was like, damn, like, he really doing all this? Was he really this bad in college? And and, he's, and there's this, oh, well, we're hearing all these reports, you know, there's, you know, and this is the thing why we didn't, the Bulls didn't draft them. They found out all these things about Michael Beasley. I'm like, well, damn. This is how the narratives and perceptions spread out to the rest of the world who don't know. They ain't have time to go research what's going on with Michael Beasley to find out if it's true, if it's false. He never had a chance to express his narrative. He never told his side of the story. So, the fact that he never told his side of the story, the narratives always stayed the same. Oh man, Capadonna and Mega? Ooh, I gotta check that out. Bun B and Mo. He said Beasley's problem was that he was coddled his whole life and there was no consequences for his action. He got put out of so many high schools. Did you realize he was put out of high schools a lot of the times because he didn't have a place to live? He didn't really get put out of those high schools. A lot of the times he lost because he went to high school and they were making an exception for him because he was so talented at basketball. They wanted to keep him in it, but he wasn't in the school zone. And then his parents, they didn't have a permanent residence. So he moved to another area so that he could get permanent residence. Then he got in a fight with uh, some guys that beat him up and all this stuff. So they got mad and they switched him out of that school and he went to another school. <laughs> it's terrible. Pusha T tricked us. <laughs> what, did, what did Pusha T do? You said he tricked us. What did Pusha T do? Well, see, that's what... When you start listening to other players' perspectives and what they're actually going through in life, man, and they struggling and they begging for help, you know, these are the narratives. 
These are the tropes that you're going through in life. Oh, okay. I'll look into that. Thank you, though, for letting me know. But, you know, from what he was saying, his mom was working three jobs. So he barely saw his mom. And then he was in every basketball camp there was, you know. His uncle got locked up when he was a shorty, you know, so... It was a whole bunch of stuff going on that he was surrounded with that messed up the perceptions of what people think. What do you mean the locker room like that? Why would he go left the way he did? What do you mean? I don't get it. See, you also caught in the name. I bet you you think because what LeBron James was probably there. Right? LeBron, uh, D Wade, all those guys, right? That's supposed to mean something. Because of names. <laughs> Bruh, do you realize Michael Beasley wasn't given an opportunity to play? He wasn't. That's what we're trying to tell you is that you not everybody gets a chance to really play, even if you're in the NBA. And then some, you know how some players just explode when they get to another team. And he'd be like, man, he got better. He must have been working on his game. And he'd be like, no, I, I Ben can do this. I didn't have a chance over there. They already have their ecosystem of who's playing. I'm gonna get selective minutes, and then I just gotta slay within that period of time. Like he said, he had averaged the most points and rebounds per minute. But he was like, man, if I'd have got the opportunity like Jason Tatum got, you saw what Tatum got and what he was able to do with it. It's not that. It's too many. No, when you come in and become, see, the thing is, is that they have a perception of you coming through the door. And once they had a perception of Beasley was from college. There was always talk about all oh, his personality and all of these different things. This was from college. So when you have these perceptions about somebody already early on in their career and their life, you've already built this up in your mind. Even though it isn't true or you didn't do any investigative anything, you built this up in your mind to say, this is about this person. This is what he is about. Like he said, he got in trouble because somebody was smoking a black and mild and he just walked in the club and somebody was smoking a black and mild Somebody put it on Twitter, Twitter saying, 
Oh, Michael Beasley and his boys are smoking up in the club tonight. He come back in the training camp. They chewing him out. For somebody that he didn't even know was smoking a black and mild. But now they finna write about it. Because somebody on Twitter put that on Twitter. And it wasn't even true, but now the narrative is spreading. This guy just can't stay out of trouble. And like he said, nobody wants to help anybody or they feel sorry for the person until that person is near dead or they dying. Then everybody's put all the cameras on them and go, oh man, now everybody is sorry. Now they care when he's dying. But you could have saved that person when he was living. You chose not to. You didn't care. Unfortunately, this is the reality that we're facing today. We don't know how, and we don't. We don't know how to project any positivity anymore. Everything gotta be negative. Everything gotta be tear down. Everybody's gotta come in there and it's like, oh, we're trolling him. I don't troll people. If I don't, if it ain't how I feel, I don't say it. <laughs> I just say how I feel. Uh, plenty of times, mostly in Florida. But yeah, a lot of people recognize me from YouTube. It was only one incident, but it wasn't even an instant incident. He just wanted to try to start his uh, YouTube video, and he was going to try to yell at me and get his stuff going. But, yeah, it's been plenty of time. Y'all saw me in the mall. Ran into a LeBron fan. He didn't even know who I was at first until he, because he just saw me draped out in that Golden State gear. <laughs> he was like, when did you become a Golden State fan? I'll be when they start whooping y'all ass. So you admit you ain't a Golden State fan then. You ain't no real fan. I'll be like, hell no. They whoop LeBron, they're a fan of mine. <laughs> you whoop LeBron's ass, we are best friends. No, a lot of people don't really understand when they meet me or run into me, they be expecting something entirely different. But most of these people are used to dealing with people only on FaceTime and stuff. So when they actually interact with people, some of them don't know how to act. <laughs> they just overly excited for no reason. <laughs> this is nice how you got that laid out. Right, I'm at the strip club. Gilbert Arenas is over here <laughs> texting me in the IG. Like, boy, you so stupid. I'm like, dude, get you a Patreon, man. <laughs> Good job. Keep bringing up my name, dummy. Like Beasley said, everybody in his family stole from him. Everybody around him, every friend he had stole from him. His manager, his agent, his advisor stole from him. That's the last thing I told Gilbert Arenas. I'm like, Gilbert, look, I'm in the strip club, man. <laughs> I had a bad chick on my left. 
bad chick on my right. Look, I'm in the strip club. I ain't in the mood to go back and forth with you on IG. Call Rich Paul. Tell him to get you a chick or something, man. <laughs> it's like 3 in the morning, dog. <laughs> I swear to y'all, I would screenshot it to you. I put it up on the Patreon so y'all can see it. <laughs> and see what this fool was saying last night. I'm like, thanks for keep making me bigger, you know. I'm on my way to 400K, right? That's the goal, right? <laughs> According to his stupid comment. And he was, oh, I've been waiting on a response. I got a nine minute video. And now he's got you and Mr. Skinny making videos. I'm like, dude, look. I said what I had to say. And it's all factual. One thing you can't say was that I was lying. And now here you are crying. I was sipping champagne. <laughs> At that moment in time, I was sipping champagne. And here he is complaining. I'm going to call the CEO. I know the CEO of Patreon. I'm like, well, good. That's good for you. Go give him a call then. <laughs> what you finna do? Tell on me? What the? <laughs> I, know the CEO. I know the CEO of Patreon. I'm going to give them a call in the morning. I'm like, all right, well, good luck talking to them then. <laughs> Tell you, boy, Officer Gilbert. Officer Gilbert. Yeah, Agent Zero, literally. He really want to be an agent. He in there brave. I know the FBI. I know judges. I know the... I'm like, yeah. Really want to be an agent. I guess he saw the video on YouTube. He didn't go on Patreon yet. And he saw the one on YouTube about him being a backseat baby. And he ain't like that too much. But it's the truth. He grew up in the backseat of a car. Since eight years old, he was living in the backseat of a car. Washing up in the park with the homeless people. I kid you not. I'm not, I'm like, I'm not joking. That really happened. Tell Gilbert to come out and tell y'all, ask y'all the truth. Y'all go to Gilbert right now Asked him, said, did you live in the back seat of a car? <laughs> That's what I told him. I'm like, dog, look, if you can get on Patreon, you know, if you can afford it, you know, I can help. If you can get your credit score above 700, then come talk to me. I might give you a loan. He just started laughing. Ha, ha, ha. I'm like, Gil, you broke. We know it. That's why you doing all this. You done bought your girl a Porsche. Your daughter, a 16-year-old per girl, her daughter a Porsche. <laughs> when she 21, you're going to turn the notes over to her. Well, you, well, I feel you grown now. You can, you can afford to pay for it. <laughs> no, I, I, I got it for you. <laughs> That's what I did. I got it for you. Um, I got to show you responsibility. <laughs> I thought you bought it for me flat out. No, 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 no. That, 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 that's too much. <laughs> now, I got it so we could turn it in in a couple of years. Then you can get you something else <laughs> when you could afford to pay the note. I just wanted the Porsche hat. <laughs> Agent less than zero.
Well, he comes he comes in the game different. You know, he comes in the game <laughs> like a weirdo. You be like, why are you doing all this, dog? You more like a weirdo. That's what it making you look like. Now, instead of build, trying to build with people like Michael Beasley and do things the right way because you was ripped off by your assistant like he was. They target people like Gilbert Arenas. They target people like that. Because they look at him and say, okay, this is, this is an idiot. I can do what I want here. Gil's advisor that he hired, right, that he gave, don't realize, he gave power of attorney to with his money, was stealing Gilbert's money, paying off his house with it and everything else. He then took millions from Gil. He didn't even know it until he went to try to go get a cheeseburger or something. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to take out $200. Insufficient funds? What the hell? What? Seven million dollars. <laughs> what do you mean? When did I do that? <laughs> so, Gil is well understandable. Understandably, he knows that you know times is hard. But this man had multi millions of dollars gone in less than four years. Gilbert. Gilbert income was a reported $176,000. A multi-millionaire player. In less than four or five years, his income <laughs> had dwindled down to $176,000. I got the statement you told the court, you idiot. I got the financials you turned over to the courts, you idiot. I know about the houses you sold, you idiot. I know everything you did, you idiot. <laughs> so don't tell me your, your investments that turned out to be multi-million dollar losses. Gil, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. This is not what you do, Gil. You only play basketball. Stick with that and your corny jokes. This is not the avenue for you because I can hurt you with facts. Facts. How you gonna hurt me with my name? <laughs> and you know what? His, he's from Chicago. And his name is Luck Kevin. Okay, no. Luck Kevin Davis. Like. I have a YouTube channel called Kevin Davis <laughs> that I've had for years. Who didn't know that? It's my name. <laughs> what do you think my name was? Carcino Faux Life? My last name is Life. My middle name is Faux. <laughs> you just didn't know because you're stupid. So I hope you spent all that money on the hacker to get you basic information. <laughs> Scoofy. G Gil's always wasted money. But talk about you growing up in the backseat of a car. I'm quite sure people want to hear about that. They want to know what the hell was you doing in the back seat, going to sleep with your feet out the window. <laughs> Ashy feet. <laughs> Stanking up the car. <laughs> you going to sleep, sticking your leg in between the seat, knocking the damn gear in the neutral. <laughs> back seat, baby. <laughs> See, I tried to prevent all this. Tried to prevent all this. And you like, how you got all this information on Gil? The man's so stupid, it all comes ahead. Like everybody know about Gil. They couldn't find a short bus short enough to put you on it, Gil. That's why you act like this. Watch why people distance themselves from you. You see why LeBron James won't be around you? 
because he know you're a dummy. He was like, I can't be around that idiot. He's too, he's too stupid. So that's why he's not around you. You've never been around anything real. That's why you keep bragging about everybody else. Oh, Rich Paul. You know, Maverick Carter. Um, you know, Matt Barnes. <laughs> Richard Jefferson. You got to brag about other people. You can't brag on Gilbert Arenas. So you got a name drop. All these other people who've actually done things. Uh, see, that information has been out there since 2009. <laughs> the channel is called Kevin Davis. <laughs> People wanted to know how did I get the name Carcino, and I told them that many years ago. It's not my fault. You just learned about who I am. The person that you said you were never going to mention my name because it does nothing for you. I don't want to. Why would I mention Carcino's name? Carcino would only get rich. It would only boost up his check. I don't want to do that. That's, that's not good for me. Why would I want to make Carcino money? Well, I don't know, Gil. Why you want to make me money? But thank you. Keep it up. Keep mentioning my name. Go live today. Call your girl Tammy. The side baby. Get over there with side, baby. Make another video about me for four hours. You know, his stanky draw self ain't got nothing to do. That's why the women out there complaining, he, his house stink, he stink. I'm like, well, damn, that sound like him. His house dirty. He don't clean his house, he's dirty. And he can't even last but about two minutes in the sack. I'm like, damn, you got women coming out <laughs> that you admitted you slept with and they just dogging you. I'm like, damn. Well, I wonder why he always ain't. My thing is, you got so much disdain for black women, why you keep going after black women? That don't make any sense to me. You keep going after black women and got all this disdain for them. But you keep targeting them. And this is all facts. I ain't got to say alleged on any of it. This is all factual statement. The woman did an interview with Mr. Skinny that he allegedly slept with because, well, she said that they slept together and he's admitted to sleeping with this woman. And the woman said, your house stinks. And it's dirty. And you don't know how to get down and you got a lot of feminine estrogen ways about you and she really only deal with women so she became attracted to you just to see what was going on because you know you got a lot of estrogen in you so don't get mad at me that's what the girl said <laughs> that you admitted you slept with Sometimes it bees like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sometimes it bees like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I decided to say to get the car, man. Why well, take the car? I don't need the car, I got two feet. God gave me two feet, let me use them. Get out and start moving around. Gotta get the wind, the ground under your feet, partner. You notice he's always at home. Yeah, I mean, you can't expect him to have a clean house when all he do is sit around in that chair 
and don't move for like six hours straight doing live stream. I mean, uh, I've seen Indian movies in shorter than that. Do five hours to do what we could do in one hour or 48 minutes. He gonna spend a whole <laughs> five hours and Gil ain't got nothing to do. Broke ass Gil. Sitting in that damn Ikea chair. <laughs> Sitting in that chair from Ikea. He ain't got no pictures on the wall. <laughs> it's like, damn, how many months you gonna have that picture sitting on the floor? You got no furniture in this damn house but that damn Ikea chair. <laughs> you got a picture sitting on the floor because you can't, you can't afford the screws. It's been sitting there for six months, Gil. Goddamn. You gonna get some screws to put the, put the picture up? <laughs> Or the person who owned the place told you you can't hang shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, we gonna have a. Kwame Brown, I mean not a Kwame Brown, but a Kanye West uh, stream yard today. But well, we're going to get people that know more about the Kardashians. Adam come on and actually talk and, you know, give their side of what's going on. around the world you've done all these things but your whole life is basketball you burrowed boys and girls club playing basketball your whole life you don't know about this that's why when you see people like Michael Beasley and they're hurting they're they're actually bleeding their hearts out and they're trying to tell you like man I've asked for this help I've asked like how do I do this and I'm not getting that and back in response now, a lot of people going to throw that on KD because him and KD were like really tight. But this is why he said he never built those relationships with anybody else in the league because he didn't trust. Because he's been robbed by everybody he knew. Like friends, his family, his, his mother stole from him. Everybody was stealing from him. He didn't know how to build those relationships up with people. And that's a very key note for people to understand. If you don't know how to build these relationships up with people, how can you be held accountable for keeping them or building them in, into a situation? Hey, what's up, dude? If you don't know how to keep these relationships. No, so what he was speaking out was from pain. You know, because they don't care about you. Like he said, if you're not the number one player in the league or something like that, they, the general public could care less about your plight, what you've been going through, how unfair you've been treated. They don't care. But he says, if you get a report that I'm dying and I'm in a hospital bed, that's when everybody all of a sudden grows a conscience. And then all of a sudden, but it was like, man, you could have probably helped that guy. You know? When that person was going around asking for help, help, help. And he's like, it's only so many times you're going to put yourself in that state. You know, you're going to humble yourself and bring yourself down to that state.
Now see, I remember this company on Shark Tank. I remember this company on Shark Tank. And now look at them, they're in the stores. It, it's only that shows you how pathetic people are right let me show you how pathetic they are once Kwame start doing things and talking about things in a positive light these people only want to try to talk about things in a positive light only to try to shame Kwame instead of really trying to reach out and do do these things they're doing it as a way of saying look see we we doing the work just to try to throw a shot for yeah. hits and views it's pathetic that just shows you the level of the Four, type of human beings you're dealing with they have no moral compass two, nothing. Three, eight, four. they come from like an elitist standpoint they have no soul all right you want back yes well, Gil lives in his head. In his mind, he's better than everyone that ever walked. So, he, he still walks around with that delusion of grandeur in his head, and he doesn't understand. And no one tells him anything different. Thank you. Like, nobody really calls him out to his face, so he still believes this false narrative. Thank you. Now, me, for instance, if I had some shades, I'd be like Kanye in the blue jean jacket when he with that other chick, Julia the Foxy. Oh God, that's another idiot. That's gonna be on the Patreon today. And we're gonna show a little bit of it. Probably doing that Kanye West stream yard we might do today. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing? <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing? All right. I don't think I'm playing, for real. Trust me. <laughs> I'm working on it. for a while now, hasn't he? Been with Adidas for a very long time. Kwame called him up and was like, hey, you got the rep, we doing this shoe drive. The rep for Nike or whatever. He gave him the, the name to the Nike rep. Right? Then, 
then all of a sudden everything did a 360. Now Kwame did a shoe drive. I don't remember the Gilbert Arena shoe drive. And you already had these things. Why you weren't doing this, Gil? You could have done a shoe drive. But us telling us you about it, now you're gonna want to do it to try to shame Kwame. Yeah, look at me. See, look at my big old camp. I'm I took kids into schools where and they took them to these companies and they were showing them coding. When when you do that, Gil? Where's your video of you doing that? Should have showed that to the world. Why you ain't show that to the world? I heard you talk about it, but show your work. We don't believe you. You stand behind all the parasites out there. You see Kwame Brown, Michael Beasley, those athletes didn't have time to play the game of get along, go along. They tried to build friends with the people they knew and say, hey, you know, help me. And other people saying, oh no, I've heard these things about them. I can't do anything about them. And then they just go cold on them. People you thought that was truly your friends turn their back on you because other people tell them to. And you instead of them saying, oh, hell no, man, that's my bro. Man, if he down, I gotta help him up because I know he's genuine. You know, like that's, that's the thing. People screw up with people that's genuinely with them. For what? If somebody been 10 toes down, why would you want that person mad at you? Why would you want to be against a person that's 10 toes down and been there for you that then helped you out? Now I can see if they've been destructive to themselves and you. Like if you pulling them down. But that's a conversation that can be had. You don't ghost nobody that's been 10 toes down. You don't do that. My thing is, why would you do that? Why are you trying to go somebody who 10 toes down? Because perceptions and narratives tear away at people's soul. When people make these false narratives and comparisons about your life and you are not in a way to defend yourself. Now through social media, finally the athlete could speak out. But back in those 10 years ago, you talking about 2008. In 2008, Twitter and Facebook were the common denominators of getting information out. And people still weren't running with them. They weren't letting Twitter and Facebook dictate their life. It started to grow since then. People didn't even understand how to use Twitter and use it for marketing purposes. So if somebody says something on Twitter, people would just take it at face value because it was on Twitter. Well, Facebook and Twitter wasn't. There weren't any verified accounts that I seen back then.
You just watched it, it's powerful. I look tired. I actually had a good night. I had, this, I had strippers all around me, champagne, and Gilbert Arenas called, texting me crying. I'm a call. I'm a call to see you on Patreon. <laughs> so go on the Carcino for Life Patreon before Gil try to take it down. <laughs> Agent Zero. <laughs> Going full police on everybody. Oh, you don't believe me? I'm, I'm going to put the whole conversation up on um, Patreon. So you'll see it. You'll see what Gil said. Did somebody say, have I walked or exercised today? Are you talking to somebody in the chat? Because I've been walking for about an hour now. <laughs> I could have easily made this five minute drive. <laughs> but I decided, let's get some road work in, baby. Let's do the work. Oh yeah, Gil told me while I was in the strip club, that he know the CEO of Patreon. He's like, I know the CEO of Patreon. I think I'm gonna call them in the morning. I said, all right, knock yourself out, Gil. I'm in a strip club, man. Why don't you get Rich Paul to get you another girl? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> I'm like, you go do that then. I'm in the strip club with it. <laughs> I ain't got time to be going back and forth with you. <laughs> sorry 14 years ago that's a very long time is it it's over a decade would you agree that social media now is a lot different than how it was in 2008 <laughs> i would agree so so that's the point That's okay, Mr. Derek. It's no, no offense taken, but sometimes we focus on the things that is just not important. But see, that's the thing though. If we gonna get on Michael Beasley for smoking weed, which he stopped doing completely and cleaned his life up i remember i think i made a video about it like michael beasley's changed stuff did all these things and i'm eager to see him win because i how was i'm somebody who thought he should have been the number one pick the bulls should have picked beasley over Derek, because we've had a string of chicago players that didn't work out every time we went that route it never worked out for the bulls they got eddie curry that was a disaster Every time they try to grab somebody from Chicago because they want to sell some tickets and go left. So I said, this probably ain't gonna work out. But Derek was the right move. Boy, was that right move. Because he was explosive. <laughs> Yeah, with all this stuff been going on and people been in the house all day, this is what old Crispy need to be doing. Crispy need to get up. Dude sitting down for six hours straight making videos. I'm like, damn, dog, six hours to talk about me and Kwame? Damn, we that interested? <laughs> then he just a walking contradiction. 
I don't want anyone on my show that agree with me. If you agreeing with me, I'm hanging up on you. All you doing is bobbing your head. Everything gives a, you'll be. And Kwame gives all this information to his friend, Carcino. <laughs> and you looking like a big black Buddha. <laughs> Just bowing your head. Don't know nothing about Gilbert. Don't know nothing about basketball. Don't know a damn thing. You need tickets to the show? Go to Carcino for Life Patreon. I'm about to show y'all on there. Gil crying last night. I kept telling them, dog, I'll give you a loan, but you you got to get your credit score over 700. And I might be able to get you a loan. <laughs> I'll be like, dog, I'm on Patreon if you can afford it. You know, you can go to the VIP. I know you got hard times. You ain't got a front for me. <laughs> yeah, he stays in the house because he know he'll get punched in the mouth. But he stay in the house because he too lazy. He gonna go right in the truck and ride around. He even brag about now he getting grocery dropped off at his house so he ain't gotta go nowhere no more. But he got to stay on there five, six hours to try to make some money because he paying for everything. He paying for views. He's paying for all of this stuff. This dude is donating money from his own pocket into his own cash app <laughs> to make it look like it's growing live on the screen. That's, that's how pathetic the human being is. He went and had an action figure made of himself. This is a guy who's thirsty for attention. Who goes and have an action figure made of themselves? <laughs> These are the type of people you hang with, Gil. <laughs> do you think, what do you think Richard Jefferson and all these guys are gonna do? And saying, you're hanging out with a guy like that? That's who you attached your brand to. That's not a business move. Ask Richard Jefferson if he's going to sit down and do an interview with Tammy. Ask Rich Paul, will he sit down with Tammy? Matter of fact, I haven't seen Gil in no photos with Rich. Or Mav Carter or LeBron James. Why is that, Gil? Yeah, he got WWE belts. He's trying to compensate for something. He always wanted to be these things. Man, I want to be a champion. But I don't want to leave my house. How can I be a WWE champion without leaving my house? or wrestling anybody. <laughs> now I could be the women's champion. I know I could beat her, but I don't understand. I'ma figure out a way to be the champion without actually fighting. I'ma buy the belt. I'ma be like Ted DiBiase. I'ma buy the belt. I'ma be my own. <laughs> Never defend it though. <laughs> you see this guy he got Voltron he got all these things that from a childhood that he never let go of
Well, that's what you do. See, when you're down on your luck, that's what you do. You project. No, this is a this is not somebody who's looking for attention. He's not Freddie P in it. You know, this is somebody who's had it and has been taken away from him. And he's not been given the opportunity. He's frustrated. You know, and he's not somebody that does a lot of interviews. Do you see him going on an award tour doing interviews? You seen Freddie P go on three different interviews in two days. He was on everybody's YouTube page. Begging for attention. It was an attention for I knew what it was. Now watch, do you see Michael Beasley going to do another interview somewhere else? Think you're gonna see Michael Beasley do any interviews anywhere else in life. Oh, wow. Well, all right. We're going to end this. If I can get a chance to. Hold on. All right. There we go. All right. We're going to slow it down and end it because the battery's dying. And I don't have time for it to cut off on me. So, let you know uh, when we're going to do that stream yard. Go to the Patreon now because I'm going to send all that information over there so you guys can be abreast to what's going to happen when we do the Conquest. Uh, 